Hello and welcome into another episode of Lockdown Wolves. Today on the show, talking all about what Anthony Edwards needs to do this season to go from star to superstar. There's two areas. Uh, article on NBA.com actually focuses on both of them here recently. I want to dig into those areas and uh, how Ant can do that this season. It's all coming. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Wolves podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Lockdown Wolves. Today's episode is brought to us by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you had a fantastic weekend. Uh, today, we're talking all about Anthony Edwards. There's an article on NBA.com from John Schumann, who does a fantastic job. He broke down a couple areas for Ant to improve. The same two areas that I've been talking about, really kind of, I think, in the season review when I talked about Ant back in June, I keyed in on these areas. And John has some good numbers. I want to go through those. I want to talk about a few things that uh, uh, I mentioned back in June, but dive a bit deeper on some items as we talk all about Ant today. A big thank you, first of all, for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every single day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also, of course, watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app. You can find that on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. All right. Um, Let's talk Anthony Edwards. So Anthony Edwards is indisputably a star player at this point, right? He's a, a multi-time all-star. Um, he made, you know, all NBA uh, third team this season. Every reason to believe that he's on the cusp of becoming a true superstar. And actually you could argue that being all NBA puts you in that superstar conversation anyway, but I think the on-court production still has a little ways to go to be like, nobody's arguing he's a top 10 player, or at least they shouldn't be. I think you can absolutely say he's a top 20 player. You could even argue by the end of the season, he was a top 15 player, which all NBA suggests that as well, although positions kind of play to that too. Uh, But how does he become a true top 10 player? And potentially, I mean, he's clearly got the potential to be the best player in the NBA at some point in the next few years. Obviously it's still Jokic now. Giannis is still in the conversation depending on the season. And a lot of people are already crowning Wemby as the next best player in the NBA. Well, Anthony Edwards could have something to say about that. And already, sorry, I said he was NBA third team. I meant to say NBA second team. He was NBA, all NBA second team. I, I hate to shortchange Ant like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess by that measure, you could argue he's a top 10 player, but I, I, I don't know that I would, right? Like if all players are healthy, if all players are are playing, um, would you truly say he's a top 10 player? Now we're pretty much heading into player rank season. So we're going to see how some of these kind of uh, arbitrary lists put Ant in terms of overall league ranking, my guess is we'll see a lot of between 10 and 15, like 11th, 12th, 13th best player in the league um, for whatever that's worth. And we'll talk about that when it, when those come out and I'll argue whatever I, whatever my perspective is on those when they come out, I'll, we'll talk about it on the show, but sitting here right now, if, if, if we could just agree that he's not a clear cut top 10 player and he's certainly not a top five player yet, how does he take that next step? How does he get the Timberwolves to the finals? How does he become an how does he become an undisputed player in the conversation for one of the best three to five players in the entire NBA? There's two main areas that I focused on earlier this season, um, or I should say earlier in this offseason, when I did player reviews and actually really going all the way back to the beginning of last season, the two areas that Ant really needs to continue to shore up are playmaking to make his team teammates better and Shot selection. Those are the two biggest things. The third one, if I was going to pick a third, and I think I, I focused a lot more on this last off season or last uh, last fall leading into the season and season previews, is off ball defense. On ball defense, when he's locked in, he's a, a like a top ten perimeter defender. He is like you could he got votes this year for all defensive second team. I don't like off ball. He's not and you know on ball. Frankly, he's not consistent enough. However, he improved a little bit this year. I think on ball, off ball improved incrementally as well. That needs to continue to improve. However, he's a plus defender overall. He's a positive impact defender 
and the Timberwolves were the best team in the league defensively by far this season. So what I want to focus on is on the offensive side of the ball. And I, I'm boiling it down to playmaking, getting teammates involved, and, and being efficient with the ball in his hands for teammates, getting them easier shots, and shot selection overall. There's an article on NBA.com by John Schumann, who, if you've heard me, if you're a regular listener, you know I'm a big fan of John Schumann. He does the power rankings at NBA.com, which are easily the best power rankings you can find during the season. Uh, he includes good context, numbers, stuff that you wouldn't otherwise, like clearly there's research and thought behind this. And this article is the same. Um, it's it's a feature, a, a film study feature on Anthony Edwards' development. And he has three things listed, and it's effectively, I, I boiled them down to my two things. He has more control of the offense and more attention in the playoffs, missing for mid-range, so his mid-range efficiency, and then playmaking in the post. I'm just going to call this, I'm going to take this a little bit differently, although I'm going to borrow some things from Schumann's article. I'm straight calling it playmaking and I'm, I'm calling it um, shot selection overall. So talking about playmaking overall, Anthony Edwards can continue to improve getting his teammates involved. Now, I think it's also important to have the context that he did do that last year. He it was a rare season. I mean, think about this. Anthony Edwards last year, he saw his assist rate go up by more than five percentage points. He saw his turnover rate drop by more than one percentage point, and his usage rate went up by 2.4, nearly two and a half percentage points. So turnover rate down, but assist and usage rate up. So he had the ball in his hands a lot more often if you take the assist rate and the usage rate. So combined, which isn't it's not quite that clean, but if you want to combine assist rate, well, actually, you combine assist turnover and overall usage rate, that's how many, essentially, how many possessions he controlled when the Timberwolves were uh, were on offense this year. So assist rate nearly 25%, a usage rate over 32%, and the turnover rate, the lowest it's been since his rookie season when he had when he didn't have the ball in his hands all that often and also wasn't, wasn't orchestrating offense at all. It's very rare to see that all three of those numbers, all three of those rate-based stats trend in positive directions. You want the turnovers down. You want, for a guy like Ant, you want both usage and assist rate up. And he did that this season. So I, I want to be very clear that he did improve as a playmaker this year. I'm not saying he didn't, but that's an area he could continue to improve. I pulled up B-Ball Index. Our friends over at B-Ball Index do a really good job at... Um, at, I don't know, compiling everything together. There's some proprietary stuff over there. But if you look at Anthony Edwards, his playmaking numbers are a mixed bag, which is exactly what I'm getting at. Assist points per 75 possessions over at B-Ball Index, which is total points from Ant's assist per 75 offensive possessions on the court, 85th percentile in the league. That's an A-, minus, according to B-Ball Index. Passing creation quality which is assists by range on the court, as well as conversion rates on potential assists. So passes from Ant versus those same players on passes from teammates to capture the quality of shot opportunities created via the pass by Ant. Okay, so what's the quality of the shots that he's creating for others? That's a 92nd percentile. That's an A. On-ball gravity, 86th percentile, A-minus. Playmaking talent, which pulls everything together. So passing creation volume, passing creation quality, passing efficiency, passing spread, scoring gravity, all that together, 87th percentile, it's an A-. minus. Lots of positive. Lots of positives if you want to break down Ant's playmaking numbers on Bebo Index. There's also some middle-of-the-pack stuff. Potential assists per 100 passes. That's 73rd percentile, it's a B. Passing creation volume. How often is he finding shots for a teammate per 75 possessions? The volume is just a B, 70th percentile. His passing efficiency is actually an F, which is high value assists and bad pass turnover numbers, along with ball control percentage. What does that mean? Together, it gauges which players are more efficient with their possessions and time to create scoring opportunities for teammates. That's 11th percentile. He doesn't actually create that many efficient scoring opportunities for teammates. The assist rate is still really good because he's got the ball in his hand so often and because of the gravity that he has. So his teammates are still, and also the Wolves were just a really good catch and shoot three point shooting team. They also had guys who were really good in the paint at finishing, or uh, at least that's where they were getting the majority of their shots from. Whether it's Rudy or um, I guess Nas was more of a catch and shoot guy than a, a dump off in the paint guy. But all that to say, the the quality of shots that Ant finds for his teammates could still improve. The volume is getting there. Remember, the volume is a B according to B-Ball Index. The efficiency is an F. 
he could be finding better shots for his teammates. How does he go about doing that? We'll talk a little bit about that next. I also want to get into some of the other stuff Schumann talked about. And of course, we'll also talk uh, beyond efficiency, uh, or excuse me, beyond uh, playmaking. I want to talk about shot selection and shot efficiency as well. We'll do all that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our title sponsors over at FanDuel. You've heard me talk a lot about FanDuel on Lockdown Wolves. It's because it's America's number one sportsbook. And right now, they have something a little bit different that they've rolled out. Now through September 22nd, which is what, like a uh, little under two weeks from now, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every single regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. Those noon slots, if you're in the central time zone, noon and 3.30 time slots, uh, you get watch every single one of those out of market. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel anytime. Again, now through September 22nd, Head on over to FanDuel, bet five bucks, and get a three-week free trial of an NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book today. Again, FanDuel.com, and you can uh, sign up. Just bet five bucks. Sign up, you get the three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket, FanDuel.com. Big thank you once again for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen of the day. Of course, for your second listen, you can check out the Lockdown NBA podcast. There's no offseason in the NBA, and Lockdown NBA provides daily basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Lockdown NBA, available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. Uh, so we talked a little bit about playmaking. We talked about finding better shots for teammates. And this will require a bit more. Um, well, I don't know. The, the overall quality of passes he's finding for teammates, right? That's the B ball index number that could improve. Um, one of the suggestions from John Schumann on NBA.com was, was talking about playmaking more from the post. He talked about how they posted about how Ant posted up more often in the playoffs than he did in the regular season. Um, and I, I'll, I'll read what Schumann says. I'll just read directly from this. He says, Post-ups can be an effective way to bend a defense and create open shots. The four players who defended Edwards the most of the playoffs were all at least 10 pounds lighter than him, so he was able to take them into the post and draw double teams, opening up opportunities for teammates. Um, he's got a clip of, of Ant doing just that against Denver, and it involves a, a cross-court pass to the opposite slot uh, to Conley, swings to Cat, who pump fakes, drives to the bucket, um, and gets a, uh, uh, a layup. Um he also said Schumann also says it's a small sample size, but the Wolves scored efficiently 1.18 points per chance, which is, of course, it's a very efficient number. When Edwards posted up in the playoffs, spacing could be an issue with Rudy on the floor. And in the clip they show, Rudy is on the floor. He's just in the opposite dunker spot. Um, he says Edwards in the post could be something they continue to explore as they try to stay atop the West. Uh, I agree with this. I I'm curious to see. It it's funny because the... Um, one of the other points that Schumann makes in the article is, is the mid-range efficiency with Ant, which we'll talk about here in a minute. I think more Ant post-ups could inadvertently lead to more Ant mid-range jumpers than it actually does assist. Now, if he perfects that, you know, everybody that that um, fadeaway he made against the Nuggets that everyone is like, this is so Kobe, so MJ-esque. Uh, like if he perfects that and he actually becomes Kobe or MJ in terms of efficiency or Kevin Durant in terms of efficiency on mid-range jumpers, fine. Because then it doesn't matter. Like, pick your poison. He can shoot that. If he can shoot that at a 60% clip or he passes, you know, finds the open guy in the perimeter from the post, that's that's when you become unstoppable. That's when you become a Kobe or MJ-like uh, offensive threat. Now, if he's not going to do that, if he's still going to shoot 45% on mid-range jumpers, then shooting back to the basket jumpers coming out of post-ups isn't probably the best option. And Finch, you know, the Wolves post-ups as a team have gone down pretty dramatically the last couple of years. Cat's been getting less of those. Nas doesn't really post up. Uh, so, or at least not very often. And, and so we're seeing the post-ups go down. Could that be a, a useful tool for Anthony Edwards? And could it help his playmaking? Perhaps. I, I think doing it a couple times a game, like he did it just a little over once per game this season, according to the NBA.com article and Second Spectrum's numbers. And he did it one and a half times per game in the playoffs. I don't think that gets above two, but one and a half to two times per game, I think that could be effective and it could really throw the defense in a rotation that they maybe weren't expecting to be in. 
And when everybody else on the floor, except for Rudy, maybe this is a tool that you're using when you're on the floor with Nas, where every other player is going to be a three-point shooter. Remember, Rudy is the only guy in this rotation that doesn't have the ability to be a league average or better three-point shooter. Everybody else should be. Yeah, obviously, some guys are better than others. Like, you know, you'd love to have it be Conley or Cat shooting a three and not Jade McDaniels. But all those guys are threats to an extent. So Anthony Edwards posting up more often could also help his playmaking in that regard. Now, passing off of drives, that's something else that B-Ball Index has some numbers on that that aren't quite as flattering for Ant. Um, let's see. Passing out of drives. Let's see if I can find where that went. I had it right in front of me. There it is. Uh, Anthony. So all of his finishing numbers, like if you, if you go to B-Ball index and they, they break everybody down into, into um, a few different categories, their key talent metric grade. So he's got an A in three point shooting. This is like an all encompassing number. I'm not going to talk a lot about three point shooting today, but an A in three point shooting an A minus in playmaking. His finishing grade is an A plus. If you drill down a bit further and you look at the finishing section on B-Ball index, he's got several A pluses, a few A minuses, a couple of A's. There's one section that he's got C's. Anthony Edwards does. And all three of those areas are, are related to passing off of drives, drive pass out rate, drive assist rate and drive assist per pass. They're all pretty self-explanatory, but I'll explain them anyway. Uh, drive pass out rate is the percentage of drives that lead to a pass out to teammate. It's only 29% of ants drives. Do they end in essentially a driving kick? That's 41st percentile. It's a C minus. Okay, so less than one out of every three of his drives is he passing out to a teammate. Drive assist rate, the percentage of drives that lead to an assist off of a pass out, just 7.5%. So less than one in 10 of Ant's drives this year ended in a made catch and shoot. Generally speaking, these are catch and shoot threes. I guess technically they could be a pass out to somebody who then drives you know, in the wake of Ant's drive and, and gets to the bucket or, or scores uh, at the free throw line. That's 48th percentile, which is a C. Drive assists off of a pass out uh, or, or percentage of drives that lead to an assist off of a pass out is 26%. Okay. So that's 60th percentile. That's C plus. So a C minus a C and a C plus in those three areas. Despite that, he's so good everywhere else. Playmaking or excuse me, finishing wise. The only other mark he's got below an a minus is contact finish rate is a B plus, which is still great. And then rim shot quality, which means he's just taking really tough shots. That's an F actually, because his shots are so tough, but his rim shot making is an A plus 98th percentile. So it more than cancels that out. So out of all these areas, and we're talking about, let's see how many different categories are here. Uh, this is, this is um, 14 categories. He's only got five categories that are less than an A minus one's a B plus one's the F we just talked about. And then these three areas that are between a C minus and a C plus. So it's all related to playmaking and the past quality and the past success rate of him passing off of drives. So if he can mix in another post up a game and he could just be a little bit more frequent and smart with his passing off of drives. And the more the teams load up on him, the better he's going to have to get at this. And we saw this a little bit in the playoffs. We saw him clearly get tired where he wouldn't even like truly get his head and shoulders past somebody and try and get to the rim. He would kind of still draw that second defender, but he would pass out of it so quickly that the recovery and the rotation was much easier for the defense and just wasn't as effective. We need to we need to see this more frequently in the regular season for Ant, and there could be the the, the um, overall efficiency of the Timberwolves offense could could improve dramatically, and all these numbers are going to look even better for Anthony Edwards if he can just you know keep improving that playmaking piece of his game. And again, I, I want to finish this segment where I started the show, which is he did improve dramatically this year. There is still a next frontier, and we are. I'm clearly nitpicking. I'm talking about areas he got C's in when he got A's and everything else, um, according to B-Ball Index. But like the, the opportunity will be there, especially surrounded by eight of nine guys in this rotation are three-point shooters. So many of them can attack off the dribble, especially Carl Thiddy Towns, Nas Reed. Uh, Rob Dillingham should be able to do that, but he's also going to be fantastic catch and shoot. TJ Shannon, same thing if he's in the rotation. There's plenty of offensive threats where Ant can... Uh, can really continue to improve all those different playmaking marks. All right, let's talk about shot selection and efficiency next. That's how we'll close out the show. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's something that you would love to learn? As an adult, do you make time to learn new things as often as you'd like, or is that something that you lost in your childhood? I, I, I totally get it. 
Um, I have kids. My kids are always learning and growing. And as an adult, I sometimes lose a little bit of that curiosity. We're busy. I'm busy all the time. I'm sure you are as well. And you just, you don't stop and take time to really, truly new some learn something new, whether it's a new language. Um, it could be I don't know, how to bowl better, how to play guitar, how to, you know, do something new in your life. Uh, reconnect with your sense of wonder. That's something that therapy can help you do. Uh, you know, at this time of year, we're all in kind of that back to school mode still. And, uh, you know, back to school can come at any age. Maybe it's time to go back to school in a sense, in air quotes, and learn something new. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It can certainly help you get off the right foot, get uh, on, get off the right foot, just get started on the right foot, whatever to, to, to really do that, to learn something new. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash lockdown MBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash lockdown NBA. All right. Um, so let's talk. We talked about playmaking. Let's talk about shot efficiency. And one of the areas that John Schumann focuses on at NBA.com is the mid range. I talked about this actually recently. I, I did a show, it was maybe in July. It wasn't that long ago this offseason where I talked more specifically about the ant shot selection thing. And actually I talked about it at length with Josh Lloyd over at lockdown fantasy basketball about, about a month ago. He did an episode all about the Timberwolves. It came out on a Friday in like mid August. Go check that out. But we got into ants fantasy numbers. Uh, well, he talked a little bit more fantasy related. I was talking just overall like, Hey, if he shoots, a, you know, takes his mid range jumpers, shoots one more of those at the rim, shoots one more outside the arc. And like we talked about earlier, if he wants to improve his assist numbers, take one more post up a game, one more kick out a game, like just, just haircuts here, like on, on the edges, right? Like if he just kind of makes these slight adjustments, which over the course of the season are a massive difference, right? Like if he takes, I, I said one more three, a game, one more at the rim, if he takes 80 more threes and 80 more shots at the rim versus 160 mid range jumpers. I'm, I'm just using 80 for the round number. Um, like how much more efficient could he be now last year? Um, John Schumann at NBA.com talks about in the playoffs, Ant shot 47% for mid range. Okay. That's in, in defining mid range. This isn't, you know, obviously depending on where you look, it's defined in different ways, but basically from the paint out to the three point line, he shot 47% for mid range. Uh, in the regular season, it's like 33% between mid range and the three point line. That is not great. You can't do that. You can't shoot 33% and, and still shoot like roughly 20% of your, now that's six. So I, I'm saying 16 feet out to three point line. He's 33%. He only shot about 12% of his shots from there, but then you lump in uh 10 to 16 feet. And that becomes basically a quarter of his shot attempts were between 10 feet and the three point line. And that number comes up a little bit. It's more like 40%, which is still not great. Uh, but the point that Schumann's making is there's a couple reasons why, um, Actually, yeah, Schumann's numbers here, he's got him at 35%. So, the, yeah, it's basically what I just said. I said 33%. Um, he talks about how his form is inconsistent with his mid-range jumper. I'm less concerned about that. I mean, I think that has more to do with the platform and how he's taking off and stuff like that. Um, and also, who's defending him? I think Ant's athletic enough that he uh, sometimes he makes adjustments based on how he's being defended. Um, and then Shumi goes on to talk about his economy of movement. He says with how most bigs defend the pick and roll these days in, in drop coverage, going from 35% to league average, 42% for mid range would make a huge difference for Edwards and the wolves. This is what I talked about earlier. Really. I was talking about post up, post up specifically, but if he could shoot a post up at, I said 60% cause like Kevin Durant, he could shoot a post up turnaround, like Kevin Garnett or Kevin Durant or Kobe or MJ all hall of famers. Uh, but if he, if he could, sniff that percentage or at least get above league average, how much more dynamic does his offensive game become shot selection overall? The easiest way to say this, and I've said this many times before, we'll talk about it again before the season is what I said earlier. Take a mid range jumper, make it a three, take another mid range jumper, make it an attempt at the rim or at least within 10 feet where he was very good this year. Probably you're going to get to the line more often. The overall efficiency on all those shots is much better than the mid range jumper. And he's still got the mid range in his tool bag. He can use that late clock situation, end a quarter, end a shot clock, uh, you know, double team, 
whatever tough situation, nobody's open, um, you know, end of game clutch moment, whatever it's got to be. He can use that. Like he can still shoot turnaround jumpers. He can still shoot mid range jumpers, but maybe not as many, right? Like, like maybe just redistribute a few of those. I mean, it was just two years ago, the 21, 22 season, he shot only about 10% of his shots from the mid range. And this year he was around a quarter of his shots. That's just a little bit too much for how inefficient that is. Now, again, he improved dramatically in the paint, like not at the rim, but like the, the 10, 10, 12, 14 foot, all those numbers are way better last year. And I tend to believe it's not fluky because it's gotten better every year. You go look at his field goal percentage from, from uh, like short mid range every season it's improved. And if that continues to improve or at least stay around, you know, he's up to 45%. Now, if that stays up around 50%, call it 45 to 50%. Like I, Again, he's already dramatically increased, improved his scoring efficiency overall. So truly, the sky's the limit. Like, again, I want to acknowledge I'm nitpicking here. He's already a fantastic offensive talent, and he improved so much this year. Assist rate going up, usage rate going up, turnover rate going down, and the three-point percentage we've seen stay mostly consistent. He shot nearly 36% this year for his career. He's a little over 35%, or excuse me. Nearly 36% this year. For his career, he's a little over 35%. It was slightly down from the year before, but the uh, the overall impact of his three-point shooting is still really strong. He got to the line more often. The free throw rate, I didn't even talk about that earlier. The free throw rate went up too. Like nothing got worse this year, which is significant when you're talking about a guy who's just entering his what should be his athletic prime. He's still a few years away from what most would consider the prime of the true prime of an NBA career. But this is where the understanding of the game, the execution of all the above when it comes to playmaking and scoring efficiency, what shots should I take? When should I pass the teammates? How should I you know? What are my options when I come off of a dribble handoff, which by the way, they should do more of this year. I, I also looked at points per possession numbers prepping for this. And like, if you're talking pick and roll ball handler, isolation, uh, dribble handoff, like the ant points per possession are roughly the same for all those, like basically point between 0.93 and 0.97 points per possession. There wasn't an area where he was dramatically better early in his career was a lot better off dribble handoffs. And I'd love to see them bring that back a little bit more. They did a little bit less of that. I'd, I'd bet they ran less horn sets this last year versus what they used to do when it was cat and Jared Vanderbilt. And now with like Rudy and cat, they're just doing a little bit less of that. Um, and less that end in dribble handoffs also because he's starting with the ball in his hands so much more often. I think there's some stuff to uncover there. I think Finch could use a bit of creativity here as, and, and I know he hasn't done a whole lot of that over the past couple of seasons because there's so much, such a high level offensive talent, but I think they could get a little more creative with how they get Ant in certain advantageous positions, with the ball in his hands. It'll prep them better for the playoffs, which obviously things, as we know, got much tougher. He wore down, et cetera. Um, but I think they, they could get him in a bit of a better position heading into the playoffs for next year. All right. That's all we have for you today. Um, we'll be back Wednesday. This is the last week. We're only doing three shows, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We'll be back to daily next week. We're, we're inching closer to media day, uh, training camp, practices, and preseason. So we'll be back to daily next week. This week, again, we'll be back on Wednesday. A big thank you for making Locked on Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch on the Locked on Sports Minnesota app on Roku and Amazon Fire TV, and you can follow on X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts at all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.